In this video, we're going to take a look at a question involving combustion analysis, which is part of formula stoichiometry. We're going to use this technique to solve for an empirical formula of an organic molecule. The question says, talks about a compound called putrescine, foul-smelling compound. It says it's present in rotting flesh, urine, and bad breath. We're told that this compound is made of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, and we're also given its molar mass. Keep that in mind. We're going to need that later. So we're told the molar mass is 88 grams per mole. We're then told that a 125 milligram sample of putrescine was burned completely. That's why it's called combustion analysis. And 250 milligrams of carbon dioxide and 153 milligrams of water vapor were collected. From that information, we're supposed to find the molecular formula of putrescine. Just a, a picture below shows you how this might work. Your sample is the sample of putrescine, so 125 milligrams of putrescine were put into a furnace, and oxygen gas is pumped in to burn that sample. Um, there's two chambers that follow, so as the sample burns, the vapor that's produced travels through like this, and in the first chamber that follows the furnace, there's a compound there, something like magnesium perchlorate, there might be something else, that absorbs water. So if you do the mass of the magnesium perchlorate before and after combustion, it would have absorbed the water vapor produced in the combustion, and then you would know that 153 milligrams of water vapor were collected. The gas that comes out of that chamber has no more water vapor in it. It'll have some carbon dioxide. The second chamber contains sodium hydroxide or some other substance like it that absorbs carbon dioxide gas. And so in the same way, you would measure the mass of the sodium hydroxide before and after combustion and you would then be able to find out that 250 milligrams of carbon dioxide were produced. Now the nitrogen in this compound is not discussed in the question very much, so out of the gas at the end would come some kind of nitrogen compound. Since you were burning it, you might think that nitrogen dioxide gas comes out at the end. We're not really, gonna, we're not really told much about the nitrogen, so we're going to figure out how much nitrogen there was in an indirect way. So let's jump in and start solving the problem. The key idea in combustion analysis is that since there, there's carbon and hydrogen, and in this case also nitrogen, sometimes oxygen in the compound, during combustion, all of the carbon in that compound ends up in the carbon dioxide. All of the hydrogen in the compound ends up in the water vapor. So what we're going to do is use the carbon dioxide to find out how much carbon was in the compound and to use the water vapor to find out how much hydrogen was in the compound. So the first thing I'm going to do here is find the millimoles of carbon in the sample. I'm using millimoles because just because the question talked about milligrams. If it had talked about grams, then I'd be using moles here. Of course, you could still use moles, but your numbers will be very, very small. So we were told in the question that 250 milligrams of carbon dioxide were produced during the combustion. Can you set up two unit multipliers to convert the carbon dioxide into millimoles of carbon. See if you can pause this video and, and set that up. So your milligrams of carbon dioxide can be converted directly to millimoles of carbon dioxide using the molar mass, or if you want the millimolar mass of carbon dioxide. You look on a periodic table, and carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Oxygens are 16.00 grams per mole. So it would be true that one mole of carbon dioxide weighs 44.01 grams. By logic, then, one millimole of carbon dioxide would weigh 44.01 milligrams. 
So we've just converted the milligrams of carbon dioxide into millimoles of carbon dioxide. Now we can get rid of the millimoles of carbon dioxide, and we can find how many millimoles of carbon were in the carbon dioxide, and therefore were also in the compound. Because remember, all the carbon in the carbon dioxide came from the compound. So looking at the formula of carbon dioxide, we see one carbon in its formula. So for one millimole of carbon dioxide, there would be one millimole of carbon. If we were looking at oxygen, we would say that in one millimole of carbon dioxide, there are two millimoles of oxygen. But we're looking at the carbon here. So grabbing a calculator and paying attention to significant digits, we're going to keep three significant digits in this answer we get that there were 5.68 millimoles of carbon in that compound. Now, at the end of a problem when we're trying to find empirical formulas, we end up doing mole ratios. So this number is going to be important at the end of the question. I'm going to just put a box around it like that. In the same way, see if you can pause the video and find the millimoles of hydrogen that were in the sample, keeping in mind that while the carbon ended up in the carbon dioxide, the hydrogen ended up in the water. So see if you can pause the video and set up this. So we're now focusing on the water. We were told 153 milligrams of water were produced. So I'm going to use two unit multipliers to find out how many millimoles of hydrogen were in this compound, or in this sample. The first unit multiplier will convert my milligrams of water into millimoles of water. And that's using a molar mass, or millimolar mass, if you like one millimole of water, looking on a periodic table, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. You add up their masses and that will be 18.02 milligrams. And then we can get rid of the millimoles of water and we can find how many millimoles of hydrogen were in the sample because all the hydrogen in the sample ends up here in the water. Looking at the formula of water, H2O, it would be true that in one millimole of water, there are two millimoles of hydrogen. That little subscript 2 in water's formula is why we said that. So grabbing a calculator and again paying attention to significant digits, we've got three significant digits in that 153 milligrams, so we can keep three here in this answer, 17.0 millimoles of hydrogen. That is also going to be important at the end of the question when we do our mole ratios, or millimole ratios. So I'm going to put a box around that. The compound was made of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. We've got two of the three in terms of their millimoles. We want to get the nitrogen's millimoles in the sample also. How can we do that? Well, there was one number that we were given that we haven't used yet in terms of the combustion, and that was the mass of the sample. We know the mass of the sample itself. It was, what was it? Um, 125 milligrams was the mass of the sample. By the law of conservation of mass, if we could find out how many grams of carbon or milligrams, how many milligrams of hydrogen also, then, since the sample's mass was 125 milligrams, we'd be able to subtract the carbon and hydrogen's mass to find out the mass of nitrogen in that sample. So let's do that in step three. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the milligrams of carbon and hydrogen in the sample. We already found there are millimoles, Let's find their milligrams now. And we're going to convert those back to masses. So we, has, we said that there were 5.68 millimoles of 
carbon, and we said there were 17.0 millimoles hydrogen, set up two unit multipliers, pause the video here, set up one multiplier here and one multiplier here, convert those back to milligrams. So we'll get rid of millimoles of carbon, switch to milligrams of carbon, periodic table, one millimole of carbon is 12.01 milligrams. Hydrogen the same way, get rid of millimoles of hydrogen, switch to milligrams of hydrogen, one millimole is 1.01 milligrams, periodic table and molar masses. So the carbon's mass in the sample was 68.2 milligrams carbon. And the hydrogen's mass was 17.2 milligrams for hydrogen. So notice we now know the masses of carbon and hydrogen. Since our sample was made of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, we could now use the law of conservation of mass to find the mass of nitrogen. So that's going to be my next step. Find mass in milligrams of nitrogen in the sample. We were told the sample's mass was 125 milligrams. See if you can pause the video here and go find the mass of nitrogen that was in that sample. Okay, so this was the mass of the sample. It was made of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So we're going to subtract the mass of the carbon and hydrogen. So I'm going to subtract 68.2 plus 17.2 milligrams. Those are carbon and hydrogen. And what's left has to be the mass of nitrogen. And I get 39.6 milligrams of nitrogen in the sample. Okay. <clears throat> now that we've got the mass of nitrogen, see if you can set up a fifth step and find how many millimoles of nitrogen were in the sample. Find some millimoles of nitrogen in the sample. had 39.6 milligrams of nitrogen. So with one multiplier, we can convert milligrams of nitrogen to millimoles of nitrogen. There are 14.01 milligrams in one millimole. I'm grabbing my calculator, that's going to be 2.83 millimoles of nitrogen and put a box around that in red. So everything I've circled in red were the millimoles of carbon, the millimoles of hydrogen, and now the millimoles of nitrogen in the sample. When you look at those three millimoles, we notice that the smallest one of them was the nitrogen. Okay? The others were larger than nitrogen. So what I'm going to do now, my last steps, I'm going to find mole ratios, step six, mole ratios, or in this case, millimole ratios. And I'm, my advice is always to take the smallest one, in this case, the nitrogen, and divide the others by this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the millimoles of carbon, divide by the millimoles of nitrogen, and I'm going to do the same thing with the hydrogen. So I'll do that over here. The millimoles of hydrogen divided by the millimoles of nitrogen. So divide by the smallest one. So for carbon, we end up getting 5.68, how many millimoles we have, divided by 2.83. And that equals, using a calculator, 2.01 over 
1, okay? And that means that there, there are 2 millimoles of carbon for every 1 millimole of nitrogen in our compound. Do the same thing for hydrogen, and we get 17.0 divided by 2.83, and that equals the calculator 6.01 over 1, which means that there were 6 millimoles of hydrogen for every 1 millimole of nitrogen in the compound. Looking at those last two results, 2 millimoles carbon for 1 millimole nitrogen and 6 hydrogens for 1 nitrogen, you can now write the empirical formula of the compound, and that's usually done in the order carbon, hydrogen, and then whatever else. If there's oxygen, it would be C-H-O-N. We've just got nitrogen, so we're going to write C-H-N. So the next step would be to find the... Um, to find the empirical formula, to write the empirical formula. Step 7, the empirical formula. We had C2H6 and N. Two carbons for every one nitrogen, six hydrogens for every one nitrogen, so C2H6N. If you grab your periodic table, and you can find this thing's molar mass, 2 times 12 for carbon, and 6 times 1 for hydrogen, and 14 for nitrogen, that adds up to about 44 grams per mole. That's the molar mass, the empirical molar mass. The last step is to find the molecular formula. If we were not if we were not given the molar mass of putrescine, we wouldn't be able to do this last step. But if you look back at the original question, if you pause the video and go back and look at it, we were told that the molar mass of putrescine is actually 88 grams per mole. So what we're going to do is take the molar mass of putrescine. We'll divide that by the empirical molar mass. So 88 grams per mole was the molar mass given in the question, and we just found that the empirical molar mass is 44, and that ratio is 2. So this tells us that the actual molecular formula of the compound is twice as large as the empirical formula. So we'll take all the subscripts in the empirical formula and we'll double them. So therefore, the molecular formula, the actual formula of putrescine, is not C2H6N, it's C4H12N2. There is the actual molecular formula of putrescine. Okay. So there is a combustion analysis problem from start to finish that worked out very nicely. The mole ratios worked out perfectly. Um, if you find that your ratios are working out very strangely, they're not giving you nice numbers, go back and just double check your arithmetic. Often you just made a silly mistake somewhere, either transcribing a number from your calculator or perhaps just uh, using a wrong molar mass. So, find odd ratios at the end, then just go back and double check your arithmetic, and usually you'll find a mistake there. I hope that helps um, in terms of preparing for formula stoichiometry.